Hello everyone, I am Jason, this is Works by Hearst, and welcome to the shop. Last week's box was a little bit of a struggle, and I learned something about myself on this week's box. Last week, I didn't have a direction. And so I was kind of, I was kind of floundering, because I, you know, I really didn't know where I was going. This week, I saw a biplane in the pieces, and so I, I started, I made the decision, I'm going to make a biplane. And having that clear-cut image and clear direction, may give me, it gave me a positive outlook on this box. And so that image helps inform all my decisions going forward. So maybe if you're having difficulty with a project or with sculpting in particular, instead of trying to just free flow, maybe pick a direction, pick an object that you can work toward and over time and over practice, it gets easier. So I, I can tell you this much right now, there are some times I can just roll, roll with no direction and, and have something good come out. But on the mystery boxes where I'm kind of under a time crunch, I need to knock one of these out every week, I need a direction. Personally, I feel better if I have a direction. So that is what we are doing this week. We're gonna make a little bitty biplane and hopefully I can take this base and, and maybe make one of those balancing sculptures where the plane will balance. That's what we're gonna do. It should be a good time. Welcome to the shop. I'm glad to have you. I really like the shape of, of this plane right here and we have enough for a fuselage and we have enough for some wings here. So my plan is to base all of my dimensions off this fuselage and base my wings off this. There's, there's enough meat in these here that I should be able to contour them in order to give me a, an airfoil type profile. Okay, let's talk about the fuselage for a second. As you can see, it tapers up like this toward the tail, and the fuselage actually stops right here. This is where the actual rear, rear rudder, I guess, would you call it? The rear rudder begins. So it tapers up from here, and then I've already cut this part out, but it also tapers from the wings back to the tail. So this is our fuselage. This is where the prop will be. This is the front of the plane. I've already started marking and cutting. So this is the thickness that it will be when I'm done. And also this is where the bottom will taper. So I'll start a cut right here and I'll cut all the way toward the back on both sides. And that will give my, my bottom the nice taper. And then the sides, the sides I'll, I'll cut all the way back from here and here, and I'll need to leave myself some meat on the bones when I do this cut so I can blend all these edges in with a, uh, a grinder. With something like this, it's, it's really not super difficult. It's just you gotta take the time in the beginning to, to do your layout and plan your cuts. But time spent in the beginning will save hassle in the, uh, in the end. What is that old saying, measure twice and cut once?
And through the magic of editing, you just missed out on about four hours of grinding and cutting. <laughs> So if you're wanting to try a project like this and you're curious as to where to get uh, flap discs like this or a debris wheel or belts for a belt grinder, it's Benchmark Abrasives. I got a link in the description. They're worth a look. Finally done. After two days of, of working, here we go. We are done. Th this particular sculpture, out of all the mystery boxes that I've done, is one of the most sculpting-like. What I mean by that is, take the uh, mono wheel, for instance. I will put a link to the mono wheel mystery box. That was more of an assembly process. I didn't really modify the pieces that were given to me. I cleaned them up and I, I did a few things to them, but it, there wasn't a lot of really hard shaping. And then I assembled a mono wheel out of those pieces. This was kind of like taking raw material and bending, shaping, grinding, cutting, cutting it into a shape, you know, and, and then fabricating an image out of those raw materials. So it was just different. And I made it small on purpose. I really wanted to exercise uh, the old detail muscles, you know? If you don't do that all the time, if you don't work on little tiny details, if you don't practice that, you don't, you're not, you don't stay good at it. So uh, that's, uh, that's why I made it so small, and that's why I made it so detailed. And also, I, I like the details. 
I, I really dig the details. For those of you wondering how I MIG weld those really tiny uh, wires together, you turn your voltage way down on your MIG welder, and I use a small wire in my MIG. I use 0 0.040, excuse me, 0 0.024 and 030 wire. And you're going to want to, when you strike your arc, it's going to be quick. They're just tacks. You're going to want to actually start your arc on the larger, thicker piece. If you have two pieces that you're trying to tack together, one's really tiny and wispy and one's heavy, you want to actually weld on the heavy one and then have that weld rise up and contact the small piece. And it really isn't a weld. You want to set your voltage down low enough so that when you, when you do a tack, you're not actually really welding the parent material, you're more like depositing filler metal onto whatever you're, you're working with. So it's not structurally really sound, but when you're trying to tack 0 .030 wire with 0 .030 wire, that's how you do it without blowing everything apart. It's almost like a braze process because the heat is so low, voltage is so low, it, and it, it, the only way to really dial that in with your particular gear is just practice. Get yourself some, some small wire, take your welder, turn it way down, and just sit there and try and see if you can get things tacked together. That's all that is, is just practice. I am really happy with the way things turned out. I will say that I spent the vast majority of my time grinding, shaping, and cutting. I actually didn't start putting things together in assembly assembling this plane, which the assembly is my favorite part, until well into the, well into the first day, and then I just kind of wrap things up today. So if you're, if you're considering doing something like this, you have to know that all the time that you spend in getting all of your parts cut, shaped, polished, assembled, detailed first, before you go and assemble your sculpture, it pays dividends because that's less you have to do once you assemble it. You may have some little cleanup to do, some weld spotter here and there to, to clean up, but time spent in the beginning doing the monotonous stuff, standing at the grinder for five hours and cleaning and shaping things, it pays off in the end. And this is a pretty simple sculpture. You could make this with an angle grinder and a MIG welder. You, do, you don't have to have a uh, bandsaw or a belt grinder for this. If you have an angle grinder with cutoff wheels and flap discs and a gas shielded MIG welder, there you go. And, and time, <laughs> and two days of time. If you liked watching me make this sculpture as much as I enjoyed making it, please consider subscribing to the channel and ringing the notification bell because I do a mystery box build every week. This is box 17 and we're, I'm shooting for 50. So if you want to be notified for all the future mystery boxes, ring that bell and then YouTube will let you know when I post. So I'm Jason. This is Works by Hearst. This is a biplane. I'm going to call this a pylon racer biplane. And I will see all of you in the next video.